The indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of, from getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Now, after years of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place we're sowing the seeds of a better way. A way with more ease, abundance, and flow. Get ready to learn about indie authorship from a whole new perspective. We're about to cover everything from releasing your poverty mentality to manifesting your millionaire author destiny. I'm Carissa Andrews, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hi there, guys. Welcome back to the Author Revolution Podcast. Oh, I have to say I am way more relaxed than I was like a week ago. (laughs) So here I am. I'm sitting here on the Tuesday after the Idaho Writers Conference. We are back home and sitting in our place, which is super weird. Isn't it strange when you go away for like a week or a couple of weeks or a couple days even, and you come home and you're like, what is this place? It feels familiar yet so different. (laughs) It also doesn't help that we left right as spring was starting. And as we come home, it's like all of the trees have bloomed. The grass is like a foot deep. Now I have to mow the lawn, which is super fun. Yeah, it's just crazy. Now my my eyes are watering because all the pollen from the trees is out and there were like very few trees. I mean, there were some beautiful trees in Boise, but along the route, there was obviously very few trees because we went through North Dakota and Montana and neither one of those states have like an abundance of trees, at least until you get to the mountainside where there, you know, you go through Yellowstone and that whole situation. So anyway, here I am. I am home trying to wrap my brain around who I am, what I'm doing, what what do I stand for? Like, what did my routine look like? I have no idea anymore. It's just completely clustered in my brain at the moment. But at the same time, I knew I wanted to get on here and talk while it was fresh in my mind about the Idaho Writers Guild Conference and all the experiences that kind of happened through there that I really, really appreciated. It was amazing. And so here's what happened. So like for us, Colin and I, we decided to drive to and from the conference. We haven't ever been through Montana. We never went to Yellowstone before. We didn't go to Idaho before. And so for us, we wanted to see and experience the the country as we went there. So we took two days on either end of the trip just to be able to travel. And they say that was a really long drive, (laughs) like really long. We were in the car The first day on the way there, we drove for about 12 hours and that was a long day, right? And so then we stopped in Bozeman, Montana, which was pretty cool because if you like Yellowstone or if you've ever watched Yellowstone, that's kind of like the area, right? Bozeman and Billings, that's kind of part of the Yellowstone allure. I think the house itself is in Darby, but it's just, it's, it was cool to be out that direction. And then the second day we stopped and we went down through Yellowstone and we went into see um, Old Faithful. <laughs> Unfortunately, we got there right as it had gone off. And so we weren't going to wait around for another hour and a bit to see it go off again. But we wanted to experience the area, take a look at Yellowstone, kind of be in that area for a bit and just kind of soak it all in. So we did that. We got to Idaho then on day two, and we hung out at the hotel. We kind of oriented ourselves so that we knew where we were supposed to go in the morning. But what was really cool was we had this. So before the conference itself started, I had a day. Well, we had a day, but Colin isn't as into writing as I am. But we had a day where we were there to check out the Robert Dugoni workshop, which was two big workshops, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, where he went through his experiences as a New York Times bestselling author and how his how he explains writing to authors. And so it was really basic in a lot of ways because it was him taking it to like the core level of what it looks like to be an author, how things work for him, how things work for other authors, like what we should be thinking about and experiencing. Overall, it was really interesting. He was a funny, funny guy, like really great sense of humor. And so just being there and witnessing like what he's talking about and how he experiences this author world was really fascinating. Then, of course, the day that I had to uh, step up was coming and I was very nervous. <laughs> it was quite the, quite the like, huh, okay, here we are, we're on the day. I knew that the first conversation that I was going to have was going to be the one that kind of stuck with people the most because I was the second speaker 
And I, so they had like two speakers in the, in the very first morning where like everybody who comes to the conference had to like, well, they didn't have to, but if they were starting with the conference, they were sitting down in the big room listening to the two speakers. So the first speaker was actually Tiffany Yates Martin. And so she went first talking about her experience as an editor and how authors need to create their own journey, right? And then for me, as an indie author, she, she talked an awful lot about the traditional side of things and how authors from the traditional perspective are viewing the world. And of course, I come up there and I kind of <laughs> I come at it from a completely different angle that like, I felt like I was completely contradicting everything Tiffany was saying. And I felt so bad. I was, I'm hoping that it wasn't too abrupt, but it was, I knew I had to be in there to aspire people for more, right? So inspire them to aspire for more. And so the, the whole conversation was about thinking bigger, of dreaming bigger, of knowing and trusting that you can do this thing called being an indie author or being an author. And her talk was, you know, very much about like creating your journey, but be realistic, you know, don't have too many hopes. It's how it kind of came across. I don't know if that's how she was intending it to be, but and like how authors have no control, you know, so just let the journey unfold. And I come from a very different perspective, right? I'm like, no, we are in this. We are in the trenches. We have the control. We have the capabilities of making this thing work for us. And it's our responsibility to envision it, to decide what we want so that we can take the inspired action steps as they come because we're going to lock into that vibe, right? Of course, I even talked about manifestation because I can't not talk about that while I'm up there explaining why we have control. And so I knew I had to motivate and that was my job. That was my one thing. And throughout the whole conference then, I got conversations stopped in the hallways, in the bathrooms, and like on the street if they recognized who I was, saying how much they appreciated the conversation that I brought up, the, the speech I had that very first time, right? It was so cool. And so I knew that was going to be the one I had to put a lot of energy and effort into. It was also the one I was most nervous about because it was the first like conversation before everything started. And I knew a lot of this was going to have to stick into the minds of everybody that was there. So there was a lot of pressure I was putting on myself. <laughs> and it was funny because the MC was talking with me and Troy Lambert before the conference started. And of course, Troy and I were talking about how nervous I was. And she goes up on stage, Amanda goes up on stage and she goes, now here comes Carissa, you know, and don't worry. She's told me she's not nervous at all. And of course, you can tell she's being facetious. And I'm just like, oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, so yeah, it was it was interesting. Luckily, I didn't 100% feel like my soul left my body the whole time, although a little bit in the beginning, like when you first start a conversation, and there's 200 eyes, like more than 200 eyes, there were 200 people with lots of eyes <laughs> staring at me. I'm like, okay, let's do this thing. So it was it was a lot of fun. And then I was on a, a panel and I did two conversations about right frame of mind and about rapid releasing. And so overall, like by the time the end of the day was done, I was like, I got this. This is no biggie. Like we we're good, right? But that first conversation, oh my gosh, was so nerve wracking. But in between, they they spaced me out really well, where it was like in between I got to go visit Claire Taylor and see her speech on Enneagrams, and I got to see a conversation with Rachel Van Dyken. She was she did an amazing talk about just being an indie author and being an, a hybrid author who like has seen things from different angles. And she is definitely one of the people that I want to bring onto the podcast later on because she has some incredible insights that I have not even tapped into myself. For instance, some of the foreign ebook readers, she was talking a bit about that and about opting your novel or your novel idea to like Netflix and, and producers and things like that. So she's got some really cool insights that I would love to bring onto the show and to tap her brain and just see if we can get some really good information from her because she's just so much fun. She was so great to listen to. So the publishing panel that I was on, it was me, Andrea Pearson, she was actually the moderator of the panel. Kevin Breen, he is the founder and executive editor of Madrona Books. He was on there to kind of give a, an indie publisher perspective. And then, of course, Rachel Van Dyken was also there to give the hybrid kind of experience. And so that was a lot of fun. We got to chat about a lot of different things. But Andrea Pearson was really fascinating as well. And she's one of the people that I would also love to bring onto the podcast. 
So Andrea is a USA Today bestselling author, but you probably know her from the Six Figure Authors podcast. And she's done a a bunch of other things as well. So I went to her, she had like two different marketing classes that I went to just to get a a better perspective on that. And and I think she did one on craft as well. So that was really cool. And um, we, of course, Becca Syme, I had to go to Becca's class, but she was talking about, you know, leveraging your personality and marketing better, faster, right? And so Becca was amazing. She is also someone I would love to have on the podcast. So she and I chatted after the presentation she had done. So I'm going to be reaching out to her today. Once we get done with this podcast episode, I'll be emailing everybody to (laughs) say, hey, remember me before you forget. I would love to have you on the show. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be reaching out to all of them and trying to bring them onto the show and do pick their brains because they, they were such fascinating speakers. And of course, Becca, I've been meaning to get her on the show forever because she's just such a neat individual. And she, her combined with understanding Enneagram with like what Claire does is just really cool, the overlay between the two of those, right? So there was a lot going on at this conference. And what was really interesting to me is like after having gone to 20 Bucks Vegas and after having gone to and created our own conferences here in the Brainerd Lakes area of Minnesota, it's so cool to see how other people put conferences together and like what makes it cool, what makes it unique, what makes it special. And I want to just say like going to Boise, (laughs) I did not anticipate Boise being as amazing of a town as it was. Like it, it has this like cool, funky, artsy vibe. And while it's definitely a bar town, it was just like so beautiful to walk around and see the art sculptures and the way that the town was laid out and the trees and the flowers. This time of year was just really, really beautiful to be in Boise. And it was so much fun just to experience the energy of downtown because when you go to a bar town, you don't always expect like, a happy atmosphere, right? Sometimes you're like, mm, let's see what's ha- going to happen here. But everyone was just jovial and singing and having fun. Or like the the music outside the bars was a lot of fun. Like walking by, you could just tell like people were all around happy. <laughs> and the the food was phenomenal. They had so many different places to eat that you know some that you know. So things like Five Guys Burgers. We stopped there for lunch that very first day because we were like, I have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going, but they had so many other places to eat. And if you liked anything like lobster or sushi or poke bowls or like anything, they had it all. The only thing I would say that was a little bit of a challenge was Colin. He is definitely a meat and potatoes and veg kind of guy. And so having a place that is really more, I don't know if plain's the right word, but have at least plain options was more of a challenge in Boise because there is so many interesting and cool foods from different places and from different ethnicities that it it was more of a challenge for him. But overall, he got through it, thankfully, and we had a a really great time. So much good food. Now, the the conference center itself was really beautiful. It was easy to find. It was right in the, the center of everything. It was easy to walk to from the hotel. It was easy to get upstairs. I mean, it was just all around really a great location and a great vibe. So What I'm trying to say is like next time, if you haven't yet experienced a conference or you're trying to find a conference to go to that's a lot of fun and has a a really great atmosphere, I would definitely recommend, again, the Idaho Writers Conference. It was small enough where you felt like, hey, I've seen you around. Thank you. You know, I I could approach you. I could talk to you. It's no big deal. You know, there were somewhere between 200 and 250 people at this conference. And so it wasn't so big that you were just overwhelmed with energy and people. But it was still a good vibe where you're like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I like this this place. There's a lot of atmosphere here. There's a lot of people talking about books. There's a lot of people talking about writing. And so it was just a, a really cool, unique place to be. It was bigger than obviously anything we had done here in Minnesota because we only have, like, I think our, our largest conference was 100 people. And that was pretty big in, in our heyday. And thankfully, I didn't have to MC this one. So that was nice too. <laughs> I just had to go up and talk. It was fine. But yeah, it, if you're thinking about doing a conference, think about going back to this one. Troy Lambert is now the board president of the Idaho Writers Guild. And his, his vice president, Daniel Parker, is like right there with him when it comes to like making some small tweaks to make sure that the conference moves smoother. And 
I mean, it wasn't by any means from my perspective, a fumbling conference at all. It went very smoothly. And I think all the speakers stayed on time and everything moved forward without like having to be too militaristic about it. Although Danielle is from the military, so I guess that helps a little bit. But it was, you could tell there was a little bit of a transition happening because everyone was kind of trying to figure out things. There were some small things that happened with like the schedules and and the booklets that came out too. But other than that, honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better conference. The energy was so great. People were excited to be there. It was just all around a very fun place to be. And I am so glad that not only was I asked, but that I went to it and that I said yes and was willing to to like make this journey because let's face it, 22 hours of driving, <laughs> that's an awful lot, <laughs> right? 22 hours of driving one direction. So we had to do that twice, right? But it was so much fun to see the the countryside and to go down there. Like I said, I just, I, we've gotten back and now I'm like, okay, this is so strange to be back home because it's like I never left in some ways, but in other ways I'm forever changed. Like there was just such a vibe, such an energy that I want to take with me, right? I want to take it with me and incorporate it into who I am and what I do and how I, how I be. And I think you would find that as well. Take a look around. Seriously, if you, if you haven't, if Idaho is too far. Fine. That's, we'll let it go. But if it's not, think about going to Idaho next year. Think about signing up. I know they're going to be putting their sign up forms for it up soon and they're going to get enrollment open so that you can do like early bird pricing for next year. I think Troy is planning on making this particular conference hybrid where like this year it was literally just in person only. There was no video conferencing or anything like that. So next year it sounds like it may be open to both. And so think about it. Think about what conferences you can go to to try to latch on to that enthusiasm and that vibe. I think we miss that just a little bit. I mean, quite a lot, actually, if you don't go there in person. So like if you're just going there to learn, like I'm when I look at my Clifton Strengths, learner is in my top 10. And so for me, I love learning. I love going there to get the information, to hear their experiences, to see what I'm missing from my own perspective that maybe I can incorporate. I love that aspect of it. But you're learning a lot when you're there with the people too. You're you're feeling that energy. You're feeling that vibe. You're excited to see these people each day because you know that we're all in this together and we're all doing this thing, right? It's different. It has a completely different energy. And then of course, being in the, the city, especially if it's not your own city, I think, it's a way to get away from your normal grind and away from the the things that you're already doing. And it kind of, it breaks that monotony or that routine just enough so that you can question like, am I doing this the right direction? Am I doing this the right way? Do I feel called to do it the way that I'm doing it? Can I change my course and make this more fun for myself? You know, or can I be more proficient or efficient? Can I you know, be more productive in a way that makes sense to me and my personality and my Enneagram type or my Clifton Strengths type. Like there, there's so many things to, to think about then after the fact and just really kind of stew with it so that you can create this life that is more you. I think that's what we're all kind of trying to strive towards. So like Claire, Becca, myself, we've gotten to a point in our careers where we're like, you know, when we started, it was just about getting the book out. It was just about making sure we could, you know, pay our mortgage. But after a certain point, you realize there's a journey here and you want this career to feel like fun. You want it to be a part of you in a way that, you know, other jobs weren't able to be a part of you. You want it to be this, I don't know, beautiful thing that you can come to every single day and truly enjoy. And I think We're in that phase right now, all of us, where we are onboarding the information. We're trying to spread it into our lives uh, in a more sustainable or fun way. And I think that's really cool. I think that's really motivating to me, too, that like I'm not the only one looking at this career as something that I'm going to be doing forever, like my whole life. This is a long game. And I, I just love it. I love being able to reinvent myself. I love being able to be creative and shift things around when I'm not digging like the direction of things and how they're working. I love knowing that if I'm not digging social media right now, but for whatever reason, Patreon is calling to me 
And I like the idea of having that paywall so that I feel more connected to the, you know, the three people who are on my paid program. You you know what? I would rather do that. And that's part of my Clifton strengths. I am a relator first. And that's something that Becca was talking with me about. Like I'm a relator first. That's my number one strength. And so to me, when I'm just screaming into the void on social media, I don't feel called to it. I just feel like meh, diffused by it. Where if it's behind a Patreon wall and I know those people are there, they're paying to be there. I can give my all. I can give what I want to give. I can be more me. And I like that. I like that aspect of it. And I like that as indie authors, we have that control, right? We're not being told, you must do X, Y, Z. You must be on all socials. You must be posting three times a day. You must be doing TikToks 42 billion times a day. You know, whatever. We're not, we don't have to do that. We can find the path that works for us. And so this conference, it was, you know, the, the main point of it was the author's journey. That was its theme for this year. And I thought that was really apropos because I think we're all on this journey right now, trying to figure out what that looks like for us and incorporating what we want and letting go of the things that we don't. And I don't know, conferences are definitely part of my journey. It, I've reached a point in my author career where it's not so much about going to the conference to learn so much, even though I do, I learn every single time I'm at a conference. But it's more for the social aspect of it for me at this point in my career. I I love being able to talk to people about writing, to be able to talk to people, you know, whether they are on my same level, people who are teaching, Becca and Claire and Kristen Lamb, you know, whoever. It's fun to talk to those people on that level as well. But it's so fun to be able to inspire the authors who are just starting out and who are just looking at what they can do and what they can accomplish. and you know, maybe weighing the pros and cons between going indie versus being traditionally published and all of those things. It's such an interesting dynamic. And maybe this is my Enneagram 9 coming through. It's like, I can see them all. I can see the validation in all of the directions. And I think it's just so cool that at a conference, it's not just one thing or the other. Like this conference catered to both those who are going indie and those who are going traditional. And it tried to have that balance between the two so that everybody felt heard and validated. And I think that's really cool. I think that's really neat. At any rate, that is my take on the Idaho Writers Guild Conference. And like I said, I'm so glad that I was chosen to be one of the participating presenters and speakers and teachers for this particular conference. And I'm so glad that I took the opportunity to do it because I would not trade it for the world. It was so amazing. Everybody there was so amazing. I made some new friends. Uh, Danielle is one of them. Danielle, shout out. (laughs) She goes by very many names. Yeah, it was just so much fun because like, you know, Danielle brought us down to the bars and I'm not a, I'm not a drinker and I'm definitely not a beer person, right? At all. But she has this, uh, I guess, like hometown brewery place that she likes to go to. And some of the beers there don't taste like beer. Like they taste like different things like peanut butter cups or mojito or watermelon. It it was very strange to drink a, a beer that tasted like, you know, like pucker up watermelon or something. It was just, it was weird. But it was fun to be down there just for the experience of it. Even if I'm not a beer drinker and I probably will never ever drink those beers again. It was just fun to like get out there and see what other people are interested in and like the experience of the town and just walk around. And I don't know, the the whole vibe was just so much fun. There was definitely something to be said about doing things that are outside your comfort zone, doing things that are different from what you would normally do. And just enjoy the experience of it. Like it gives you more fodder for your writing too, right? When you meet these people who are larger than life, and believe me, Danielle was larger than life. She was, she was amazing. As was Stacey Smikowski. Oh my gosh, that woman. She's an editor and she, Danielle and I all went down to the, oh gosh, what was that called? It was one of the coffee places. Dutch Bros? I think it's Dutch Bros Coffee. I'm terrible at like remembering names. Uh, I think it was Dutch Bros. And (laughs) apparently there's like this local drink called the Wookiee Spice. It's like a mixture between apple, like apple cider and chai tea. And so Danielle got me to drink that as well. It was like she was a drink pusher, this woman. (laughs) But it was a lot of fun to try different things that like I don't have in central Minnesota. I don't have a Dutch Bros. I don't have, I think we can get Dutch Bros in like bags, but we don't have one here. And trying different drinks that like I would never in my wildest dreams like think of like a Wookiee spice. Okay, why would I mix apple cider with 
with that. And it wasn't just apple cider. It had like a kick. It was like a, an energy drink, apple cider type situation. It's so good. But <laughs> at any rate, you, you have these experiences and now you have them in your subconscious mind, in, your, in like your back, the back of your mind to be able to pull out and use whenever you are writing, whenever you're experiencing something or sharing something through your words. And so just think about that. Think about the experiences that you can have, the unique perspectives and people that you're going to get the opportunity to meet at the conferences. And, you know, there are times where you can pull some of the crazy things that happen and put them in a book. Like so many cool, fun things that you don't have then have to like create through your imagination. You can just be like, (laughs) I know a guy this one time, you know, and just put it in your words. So that is my recap of the Idaho Writers Conference. I hope you enjoyed the perspective. I hope you will think about going to a conference yourself. And if nothing else, for sure, putting on your list that Idaho Writers Guild Conference in Boise is an incredible conference to go check out because it absolutely was. Now, Colin and I are going to be leaving in two weeks to go to InkersCon down in Dallas, and I will do the same thing where I can let you know how that particular conference is or was compared to this one in 20 books so that you can get a a good perspective on like, what do these look like when you're at the actual places, right? I've never been to Texas. I've never been to Dallas. So this is going to be another one where we're going to drive down there and see how this goes and see what kind of life is down there. It's going to be an interesting time. I'm looking forward to it. All right. If you'd like to grab the transcript to today's podcast episode, head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 184, and you can get it there. And if you are interested in summer classes this summer, we also have summer classes going on this summer. So I've posted them up. You can head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash summer classes to check them out. But the first one's coming up June 2nd, and we're going to be talking about manifesting more money for authors. It's going to be like a 101 manifestation class for those who are looking at kind of coming in at the ground level when it comes to manifesting and understanding how manifestation can work for money for our author careers and going bigger, right? In July, July 7th, we're going to be talking about shattering your limitations. We're going to talk about, you know, that that upper edge, the glass ceiling that we tend to reach at times, right? So there are energetic minimums and maximums that play a role in all the things that we're doing, whether it be how many words we think we can write each day or how many books we could publish a year or even how much money we're going to earn. So we're going to play with what it feels like when you're moving beyond that limitation or beyond that glass ceiling and how to know when you're bumping up against that versus something you shouldn't push past, right? So then in August, we're going to do Healing Your Inner Child. This is going to be in collaboration with Tammy Tyree, the board certified clinical hypnotherapist. She and I are going to be talking about healing the wounds of the past, like getting over some of the things in our past that keep us stuck when it comes to getting our words out there, our books out there, or just living our best lives when it comes to being an author. So if you're interested in that one, that one is August 4th, like I said. So head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash summer classes. That's one word, summer classes. And you can check those out and get signed up. We're going to have a lot of fun in those classes. They are live Zoom sessions. So you can hang out with us, talk with us, have a Q&A at the end. When Tammy is going to be joining us, I'm sure she will do a group hypnosis session like she usually does. So all of these things are coming up and just be aware of them because we're going to have a really good summer. We want everyone to start looking at living your best author life, thinking bigger, moving past the limitations, and definitely healing anything that is keeping you stuck in the past. All right. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to getting this podcast episode out and done so that I can start thinking a little bit more about writing again. I have two weeks to to get some words on the page before we have to go to InkersCon. So time to get my brain working on all of that, right? Have a wonderful rest of your week. We will talk to you again next Wednesday. Enjoy your week. Get words on the page. Go forth and start your author revolution.